Now, I'm a firm believer if you are wanting some luxury watch or any watch that might be just slightly out of your price range or you could purchase that watch with some responsible saving, I think you should do everything you can to make that happen. Resist the urge for the instant gratification. That said, there are rare instances, say in a case like the Rolex Hulk, where the thing have just become so hard to get a hold of when you factor in maybe the secondhand retail prices, them being discontinued, where I think it totally redefines what the common maybe protocol would be for getting one of these watches. So what I wanted to do, like I've done in the past with some other models, is look at some alternatives to the Rolex Hulk. I think now this is a more appropriate video to do, just given the scenario that just kind of pointed out. Harder to get these watches, crazy prices on the secondary market. So today we're gonna be looking at a variety of different options that are at least getting you somewhere near the Rolex Hulk. Not all the way in pretty much any of these cases, because there really is no true substitute, but things that might be able to scratch the itch with things that you can actually get. Now in this video, what we're gonna be doing is going over a bunch of different watches. Most of them, of course, are going to be a little bit less in terms of the price of the Rolex Hulk as a kind of obvious uh, probably point there. Also, all these watches are gonna be diver oriented. Having green dials is typically going to be the approach as well. I don't want necessarily a direct copy like an homage, more of just a different interpretation of a green dial a dive watch that could also kind of maybe do the job and scratch that itch again. And one final point, I'm not gonna mention micro brands because I think that will turn into a longer list. So just gonna stick to more mainstream brands. But guys, before we jump into this video, definitely check out an awesome blog looking at 45 of the best watches you can get for under $5,000. I think that would be a good place to go if you're maybe just wanting to investigate even further beyond just maybe the green dial and just want some great watches in that range for under $5,000. Check it out on teddybaldasar.com. Link will be in the description. All right, so now our first step up on this list is going to be the Longines Hydro Conquest. Now, I am a huge fan of Longines in terms of what they're delivering from a value perspective. When you talk about $1,000 to maybe like $4,000, I think Longines is right there with the best of them in this range. Now, one of the models from this brand that I think is probably overlooked quite a bit are both the Conquest and the Hydro Conquest series. I'm gonna be looking at the Hydro Conquest today because I think it really does match the kind of vibe and look that we're going for. Now, this variation is gonna come with a green dial ceramic bezel, so you're gonna get a bit of that glossy tone and kind of uh, just reflective nature that would come with the Hulk, of course. Getting a bit more of a, I would say, kind of forest green in terms of the approach here. 41 millimeter case, 300 meters of water resistance, also getting that L8 Eight movement on the inside here. So these are movements actually produced by the Swatch Group umbrella for Longines specifically. So you're getting some nice proprietary type of technology here that's only used by Longines, which is great. In addition to that, long power reserve on this one to really allow this to really stack up with the competition as well. Big fan of the look of this one. Underrated watch from Longines as well and I think it's a great one to have on this list. Now moving into Seiko, and just to pick out one Seiko watch here today, going to be looking at the Seiko SPB 177. So this is the Seiko Sumo family, and you could probably mention quite a bit of different Sumos. I think these really do kind of carry over a lot of the attributes that somebody would be looking for, uh, maybe if they're trying to get a Hulk on the cheap. In terms of the approach here though, this is the built for ice variation. So I reviewed these models, this one, as well as a couple other variations. The one that probably got the least amount of love was this green dial variant, but in terms of the one that I was probably reaching for the most was probably this one. I think it looked great on a variety of different situations. And the case size is 45 millimeters. Do keep in mind that it is going to wear smaller than that. I say closer to a 42 to 43 millimeter case. Now the Samurais as well as the Tunas do have larger case sizes as well, but I always find that the Sumos kind of, I would say, wear a bit larger and have more of a presence on the wrist. You're also getting a 6R35 caliber, so new movements inside of here to get that extended power reserve of 70 hours, but a pretty straightforward watch from Seiko. Like the just design, definitely different than that of the Hulk and the other Sumo watches that are a bit more straightforward in terms of their dial finishing. I think this one stands out. Now next up, we have the Oris Aquas Date Caliber 400, and this is going to be the 41 and a half millimeter variant. Now the reason why I think the Aquas is a perfect choice for a Hulk feel on a more attainable end, and also getting a ton in the process. So if we're looking at the new Caliber 400s, you can also throw in uh, some of the Salita power variants as well if you would prefer to save a little bit of money here. But I figured the Caliber 400 is an extra just point or few points, I probably should say, in terms of what it's delivering with its extended power reserve and also kind of getting in the world of proprietary movements by Oris. But I like this watch as a nice, more attainable variant 
of the Rolex Hulk for a couple of different reasons. I think it plays the same game in terms of what the Hulk is going for in regards to design a little bit more. In terms of modern Submariners, I think they do feel very modern. Uh, Rolex does not mistake what they're going for in terms of their approach. They're, I think, a little more blingy, of course, than what the Oris is gonna go for. But you get a lot of those characteristics, but also I think with Oris, I think understated tones as well with what it is going for. But in terms of what you will see, you get some polished surfaces, brush surfaces that really do pop out. That integrator bracelet on this thing is fantastic. It does really look the part. Also, when you're factoring in the wearability, very similar to that of the Rolex Hulk in terms of what this one is going for with that integrated bracelet, 41 and a half is gonna work closer to that at that 40, 41, which is really where those maxi case style uh, watches from Rolex are kind of fitting in in terms of size. And you're also getting that ceramic bezel as well to match. I just think the Oris Aquas, no matter which one you're talking about in the Caliber 400 or as well as the Sleda versions, the Sleda versions, I think, just set the standard for what a $2,000 dive watch should be. I think that's the kind of standard to meet. And then when you jump up to the Caliber 400, of course, you get all the same things that come with the Salita in regards to the case and what is going on there, but getting that movement with that extended power reserve and all the new technology that Oris is just embedding within this watch. So now looking in a very similar price bracket, but going in a very different direction in terms of the approach, going a bit more vintage inspired, but also throwing in some contemporary just approaches as well. And as with the Rado Captain Cook, going to be looking at the green dial. Now, no matter what Captain Cook variant you go for, they are gonna really embody that early 1960s dive watch. They came out in 1962 for that original version. A lot of similarities to the approach of the Breitling Super Ocean. But these watches, I think for the price and the design attributes that they have really do pop and I think offer something that, some attributes that would be the same as what you might see from the Hulk, I think would be a great comparison if you wanna go more of that vintage route. Now the version I'm wearing on the wrist right now is actually the gray dial variant and this one does not really share much of the same uh, type of approaches in terms of the glossy texture of that ceramic bezel that the green dial variant would. But when you go for the green dial, it does have a different approach in terms of what it is going for in terms of the different Captain Cooks out there. I like how just the glossy texture, the dome sapphire crystal with that slanted in bezel, all works together very cohesively to create a great vintage approach. 80 hour power reserve for that movement. Also looking at very suitable water resistance. Now you do have a 42 millimeter case, which is going to wear closer to that of a 40 to 41. From my experience, I wear the 42 on my wrist and I have a small wrist and it looks great on me. So just keep that in mind. But Rado Captain Cook, if you're looking for some contemporary looks with that ceramic bezel with kind of that classic 1950s dive watch look, this is a good one to go for. Now next up, we have the Bulova Devil Diver, the Ocean Grapher. In terms of this watch, I was a little bit hesitant to put this one on here because it doesn't have a completely green bezel. It also has probably the most retro and different look compared to pretty much anything on here. And what a lot of people consider the 1960s and 70s from Bulova, I think many people think of their chronographs, but also when you're looking at the dive watches from their catalog, something like this, I think does epitomize what the brand was going after in this time period and also what I think watch design was going for in a lot of these, uh, just this period, I would say. You have a case that is rather broad, but in terms of lug to lug distance, 46 millimeters, very broad cushion case style lugs that just really pull the viewer in. This is gonna have probably the most unique wearing experience of any of the watch mentioned on this list here today. 200 meters of water resistance. Loom is not as great as a lot of the other competitors on this list. And also you're getting a Miyota 8215 movement, which is probably the only issue I would say with this watch in terms of where it's positioned. But otherwise, love the look of this watch. Very different, a watch that you can have fun with and also doesn't cost an arm and a leg so that you can have fun and probably justify the purchase a bit more. So since 2004, the Aqua Racer family has been one of the best sellers for Tag Heuer. And the unfortunate reality is for this watch is I think it becomes a casualty to the other watches in this price range and where it's occupying. You're talking about the Tudor Black Bays, you're talking about the Omega Seamaster Diver 300s, and I think that causes this watch maybe not to have the most compelling of value propositions in comparison. But to say that this is a bad watch is not true. I think these are very striking looking watches, and you're also getting some new ones released this year, uh, these 43 millimeter variants and this green dial variant coming in titanium that I think for a video like this today is the perfect way to kind of give this watch a, more of a spotlight. So unlike that of the last two watches we looked at, this one is certainly going to be more in alignment with the Aquas in terms of more of a contemporary modern feel 
in its execution, getting 300 meters of water resistance, a grade two titanium case with a ceramic bezel. You are getting a third party at a caliber inside, so that is one thing to keep in mind. I think some people might find some hesitancy with that, but getting a titanium case, dive watch with actual professional specifications from a brand like Tag Heuer, and I think an attractive looking watch. I think the best thing going for these watches is just the looks of them and the design. But this is one of those watches that in a video like this makes a ton more sense to include. Grade two titanium case, green ceramic bezel, also getting some nice professional specification with 300 meters of water resistance, nice loom, and of course, coming in green. So now to look at a more attainable watch on this list, looking at the Hamilton Khaki Navy Scuba in green, of course. Now these watches, in terms of the entire collection of the Khaki collection, there are a lot of other just watches that will get way more play than these. But these are cool looking watches. I think they're unfortunately in a, a strange application competing with the Khaki Fields in the same collection, 100 meters of water resistance, so not really maybe the dive watch, uh, full capacity of water resistance that some might prefer, but let's be real, this is gonna be enough for 99.9% .9 of people. But these just look great. And in terms of this green dial variant, I think it makes a ton more sense in this range. And you're talking about value as well. These are great watches under $1,000. You're getting the familiar ETA C07 movements inside of here, basically those 80 hour power reserve movements, taking that ETA beat rate, dropping it down to 21,600 vibrations per hour to maximize that energy store in the mainspring. Simply put, a great watch regardless of what you're looking for, but if you're looking for a Hulk alternative on the more attainable end, the Navy Scuba certainly should be there. Now this watch, I was a little bit hesitant to put on this list just because it is a bit more of an expensive watch. When you're talking about alternatives, I think people like to see things on the more attainable end, but I couldn't argue just including this watch because I think it is absolutely fantastic. And also from a design standpoint, as well as a standpoint of what it is giving for the money, uh, it makes a lot of sense to include on a list like this, and that is the GOCQ at 39 and a half millimeter, the new green dial variant. So I've done a complete review of the blue dial variant on the channel, which I spoke very highly of. I think, again, very similar to the tag in its own price range, kind of becomes a casualty of the just range in which it's occupying. There's a lot of just heavy hitters in this price range, and of course, the Rolex Submariner is probably the top dog when you're talking about this in the range. But in terms of what this watch is bringing to the table, no question a best in class type of German dive watch in this $8,000, $10,000 range. First going for that 39 and a half millimeter case, wearability on this one for those with say medium to smaller wrist is gonna be right in the wheelhouse for something like a Tudor Black Bay 58. If you like the wearing dimensions of something like that, you're gonna love this. Ceramic bezel with some nice glossiness to it that will allow it to pop quite a bit. But this entire dial just pops. It really pulls the viewer in when you have this one strapped on. You're also getting an in-house 3911 caliber on the inside. Really the biggest challenge with this watch, or the biggest, I say issue with this watch is the fact that it's not on full display. You do have some of those panel date versions that will have a box sapphire case back, exhibition case back, which I would love to see on these watches. These watches are thin enough where if you had added just another millimeter to the thickness, I don't think it really would be a, just pulling away from the overall wearability of this one. I think it brings more in, the, in return because the movement on this thing, is probably the best thing going for it. But yes, these watches are expensive, no question about it, and they're not gonna be for everybody, but I could not go without mentioning this watch on a list like this. All right guys, now that is my list of Rolex Hulk alternatives. If you did enjoy the video, thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the bell icon. In addition to that though, if you wanna see more of these alternative videos in the future, Leave a comment about another watch you would like to see covered. We'll just take a look at those and uh, see what you guys want to have just in a similar format to this in the future covered. I typically like to have watches that are kind of of this type in terms of just not being able to get them that easily, uh, but let us see what you guys would like to see in the future. In addition to that, definitely check out that blog mentioned at the beginning, looking at 45 of some of the best watches you can get for under $5,000. Check that out, as well as all the buying guides on teddybaldasar.com. have quite a few different ones on the site. Also be sure to follow us on Instagram as well, see some cool photos of watches, and stay up to date with the content. But guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well, and I will see you all very soon.